So hello everyone, welcome here to the penultimate round of the 2014A NASA Rally Cross Challenge season on the first of a doubleheader here in Irwindale as it's Josh Mertz bringing you the call for the Automotive Sports Network today. Here's our format, we have eight cars but only seven will be running due to uh, Cody Erdman's engine failure earlier in practice. Two heats, four laps apiece, top two advance, Joker once. LCQ three laps, top two advance, rest are awarded points, Joker once. Final will be six drivers for eight laps, and you have to take the Joker twice. So let's get to it, and keep in mind, the top two in points are under a blanket. We're having them up for heat number one, and it's lights out, and away we go. And off the line, living good and Sherman beating and banging. Nicholson, your Privateer Cup champion, as he's locked that up today, is in third. Starting lap number one of three here. And living good, your Triple Crown champion. Him and Wetz are pretty much tied. I mean, it's one or two or four points, but it's so close that I've gotten him confused for the past four weeks. As the outside shot, Tristan Hagenstein has been on a tear on the lower positions of the podium, but Revolution Racing has owned the top step of the podium. As Living Good leads, as we begin lap number two, he takes it to the Joker, so does Sherman, so does Nicholson, so no strategy uh, differentiation here as Living Good pulling away from Sherman as these two have had an interesting battle I believe it was Bent Twig last season when they came together and uh, it was either Lambert or Living Good and Sherman ended up winning the heat which was pretty extraordinary as Sherman takes to the Joker again I don't know if that's exactly correct but um, We'll see if that's correct. White flag for Living Good. I don't know if we take the Joker twice here at Irwindale or once, but let's see if Living Good takes to the Joker. Uh, he would not. This is the white flag. I don't think it really matters because it's the penultimate round of the season. But who knows? Checkered flag. Living Good wins Heat 1. Sherman transfers Nicholson to the LCQ. Heat number two, it looks like we'll have Hagenstein, Cars, Smith, and Chris Wetz as those four cars will take fight in this heat. On pole will be, I believe, Nick Cars in car number 35. Then it'll be Tanner Smith in the private Mitsubishi. Chris Wetz in third in the manufacturer Mitsubishi. And on the outside pole, the only Subaru that is on track Tristan Hagenstein in car number three. So, these four cars, top two will advance like usual. The other two will go to the LCQ to join Nicholson to see who transfers through. We're having them up for the penultimate he second heat. And then it's lights out and away we go. Off the line, cars missed it. Three wide, Smith, Wetz, Hagenstein outside of turn number four. Hagenstein battling with Wetz and make contact. And beginning of lap number one. To the Joker goes Hagenstein. I don't know if that's legal, but he's doing it anyway as he hit the wall. As Wetz needs these bonus points to keep ahead of his teammate and keep the fight alive. But who knows what will happen. Rounding the dirt corner. Three laps to go. Smith leads. Wetz to the Joker. Hagenstein has taken his Joker already, so he will be fine to the end of the heat. And so is Cars to the Joker. So two on the regular, two on the Joker. Smith is sideways. Hagenstein tries to take the fight to him. They nearly make contact over the jump. And rounding the corner to take the penultimate lap. Wetz has filtered through to the lead due to the Joker. Smith will go to the Joker in car number 13. And Wetz now leading on the road. As I believe you have to take the Joker twice in the heats, although I'm not sure. But we will try and check that for you. White flag in Rivers, uh, Irwindale, excuse me, sorry there. For Chris Wetz, Hagenstein second, Smith third, Cars fourth. And you do only have to take the Joker once. But it must have been a miscommunication with Nicholson and Sherman. Last heat. As he hit the wall, so does Smith as those two are having issues for the transfer spot. Wetz isn't though, give him a bonus point to match his teammate, he wins heat two. Hagenstein second. To the LCQ goes Cars and Tanner Smith. And the final. Already here, getting set and ready to go. 
We have six cars battling for eight laps here in Irwindale. And here's the grid. On pole, Triple Crown champion Dylan Livingood. Four times, or th um, two times a winner this season. Sorry about that. I believe it was twice here in Irwindale. Outside of him, his teammate who won in Croft, Chris Wetz. Outside of him, Keith Sherman. Outside of him, Tristan Hagenstein. Back row, Tanner Smith, Nick Cars. The two title protagonists are in the red and yellow gates. And then the very, very, very outside shot, the only one still mathematically eligible is Tristan Hagenstein, but I don't think he'll be eligible much longer. Revving him up for the penultimate round of the 2014 A season. It's lights out, and away we go. Contact with Sherman and Hagenstein off the line. Rounding the oval turn four for the first time. On the outside is Wetz at the line. He gets the whole shot. Yes! And um, Livingood has the line going into oval corner number one. To the Joker goes Sherman and Hagenstein. As Livingood took the fight to him, and he took the spot away as they entered the infield for the first time. As rounding the final corner, ending the first lap here in Irwindale, it's Livingood, Wetz, Smith, Sherman, Cars, Hagenstein. So to the Joker as Hagenstein smashes the wall for the second time today. To the Joker went Livingood, Wetz stays out. We're gonna focus on these two as they are the title protagonists. As we're ending lap number two, let's see if Livingood can keep the lead. Line, no, Wetz got him by a few inches. As the fastest lap of the race, 22.294, then it's Wetz at 22.446, then it's Sherman at 22.833. You can see they're on different brackets, gone from the rest of the field. These Mitsubishis are insanely fast as they've won five consecutive races this season. As Wetz leads lap three, second place is living good. To the Joker goes Sherman. Smith will stay out, and Cars goes as well. So Wetz pulling away from Living Good as he's gone faster by a tenth of a second over his teammate. And if I don't know, I don't know what this is a drive of a champion over Chris Wetz. Cross flags being shown as the merge is gonna be tricky between Sherman and Smith, and they make contact for from third and fourth. This will elevate Hagenstein to pick up the pieces in third. As we're on lap number five, coming to three laps to go here in Irwindale. And Wetz will lead, as I don't believe there's any Jokers left. Yes, there is. Wetz has one Joker left, I do believe, with three laps to go. As Nick Cars has hit the tire barrier in car number 35, to the Joker goes Smith. Sherman rounding oval turn two, trying to take the fight for third, or fourth, excuse me. Let's see if Wetz can hold the lead. Convincingly, he does with two laps to go. About a mile left here in Irwindale. And let's see if Livingood can take the fight to his teammate. Hagenstein is now third quickest, but he's four tenths of a second slower as Livingood has now set the fastest lap, 21.930. Wetz, a 22.715 was his last lap as the white flag is in the air for Chris Wetz. In car number 71, his teammate is leading him in points, but he is leading on the road, and I think he'll have a one point lead if he can take this victory. Living Good dives it in, but I don't think it's going to work. Rounding the final corner, they only got a one-two finish in St. Eustache, but make that two. Wetz wins and takes the points lead over his teammate who finishes second as a one-two finish from Revolution Racing right at the time that they, then they needed it. Hagenstein third, Sherman fourth. Looks like fifth is Smith sixth as cars, but let's get confirmation on the results here. Wetz wins, Living Good second, Hagenstein third, Sherman fourth, Smith fifth, cars sixth, Nicholson seventh, and Erdman finishes in the eighth position. The Drivers' Championship with one round left. That's how it looks. Chris Wetz 140, Living Good 139. If, Wit if Wetz finishes anywhere ahead of Dylan Livingood, he's your champion. But if Livingood finishes ahead of Wetz in any way, shape, or form, it's Livingood's championship. But if they both finish down in points, Livingood has to finish one spot ahead of him and hope Wetz doesn't win his heat. Because if Wetz wins his heat, 
then the championship is tied and it goes on wins. And I believe Living Good would get that. I believe he's got three wins this season over Wets now has two. Hagenstein, if you look at that, he is now officially out of the championship hunt with 117 points. Lambert, 106, who has not been here, I believe, since Island Rally. Smith with 79, Nick Carr, 71, Mertz, 68, who has not been here since Talladega. Erdman, 65, Fleming, 64, who hasn't been here since Island Rally, and your privateer champion has 57. The Constructors' Championship now officially clinched by Revolution Racing, their fifth championship, 273 over Red Bull Subaru MRT, 236. Volkswagen 145, Mangle Lemons Racing 127, and MRT Junior 103, and the Manufacturers Championship. Uh, Mitsubishi 163, Subaru 155, Volkswagen 108, and Ford has 86. So in a few moments' time, they're going to regrid and get ready for the second round of this doubleheader. But we'll see you in a few minutes for the second round and the final round of the 2014A season. <laughs> 